From Washington, this is VOA News. Egypt officials say they are investigating Mohamed Morsi. Typhoon Sulik forces 300,000 Chinese citizens to evacuate. I'm Vincent Bruce reporting from Washington. Egypt's public prosecutor's office says it is investigating complaints against ousted President Mohamed Morsi and members of the Muslim Brotherhood, including the Brotherhood's leader, Mohamed Badi. Complaints against the first democratically elected president of Egypt include spying, inciting killing protesters, and damaging the economy. The prosecutor's office did not say who had filed the complaints. Mr. Morsi has been held at an undisclosed location since the army removed him from power on July 3rd, but he has not been charged with any crime. Supporters of Egypt's ousted president remained in Cairo's Rabat al dawiya Square on Saturday, determined to protest against Mohammed a protest until Mohamed Morsi is reinstated. The Muslim Brotherhood movement has gathered at the square since Mr. Morsi's removal. Typhoon Sulik has forced evacuation of about 300,000 people along Chinese southeast, east, uh, southeast coastal region of Fujian. Chinese Meteorology Center says the typhoon made landfall Saturday. They say it had winds of about 120 kilometers per hour. The typhoon had slowed since it made landfall on Taiwan's northeastern coast earlier in the day, killing one person and injuring at least 21 others. Seven United Nations peacekeepers were killed Saturday in Sudan's troubled Darfur region when gunmen ambushed their group. The assault marked the single deadliest attack on the joint African-UN peacekeeping force in its five-year history. At least 17 other peacekeepers were injured in an attack, two of them female. More details at voanews.com. Canadians have paid their respects to victims of the deadly rail disaster in the Quebec town of Lac Megantic. As authorities confirmed, 33 bodies have been found. Church bells rang out 50 times in Lac Megantic Saturday in memory of the 50 people believed to have died in the July 6th oil tanker explosions. Additional ceremonies took place in other Canadian cities and towns. A large truck carrying concrete and asphalt rubble smashed into a passenger bus near Moscow, cutting the bus in two and killing 18 people. Russia's Emergency Services Ministry reported the increased death toll Saturday. Another 25 people were injured. The truck overturned when it hit the bus, a local government official said, and most of its load. 12 cubic meters of broken pieces of concrete and asphalt roadway fell onto the wreckage of the bus. U.S. President Barack Obama has called for passage of a Senate-backed immigration bill that would strengthen border security and offer a pathway to earn citizenship for people who are currently in the country illegally. Mr. Obama said Saturday that the bill passed by the majority Democratic Senate Senate would provide a big boost to the nation's economy. It would offer a pathway to earn citizenship for the 11 million people who are in this country illegally, a pathway that includes paying penalties, learning English, and going to the end of the line behind everyone trying to come here legally. And it would modernize our legal immigration system to make it more consistent with our values. In the weekly Republican address, U.S. Senator Mike Enzi spoke about health care, calling for an across-the-board delay of health care reforms nicknamed Obamacare. All across the country, health insurance rates are skyrocketing. Employees are losing coverage through their employers. Families are struggling to cope with higher costs and less choice. Businesses aren't hiring full-time employees. Generally, if it comes from Washington and it sounds too good to be true, it is. NZ said it is time to admit that what he called a partisan experiment in government-run government run health care is failing. French officials say it was poor equipment, possibly a loose piece of rail, that caused a train to derail south of Paris Friday 
killing at least six people and injuring another 30. Transport Minister uh, Frederick Covier uh, praised the quick actions of the trained engineer. He told a ra French radio station the man's quick action in reporting the derailment prevented a collision with another train by only seconds. Russian officials say they have not received a formal request for asylum from fugitive U.S. intelligence leaker Edward Snowden. Snowden, accused of leaking information about classified U.S. National Security Agency surveillance programs, on Friday met with human rights activists at the airport in Moscow, telling them he is seeking temporary asylum in Russia until he can safely travel to Latin America. For all the latest, visit us at voanews.com. I'm Vincent Bruce, VOA News, reporting from Washington.